Okay, so what I wanted to do was go over how to deal with and how to approach doing uh, cables like the ones that are on our piece here. And so the first thing we want to do is to get access to them. So we need to open up our group. And there, I've got a hold of that one. And so let's go ahead and just going to focus on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and hide everything else. And one of the things that we want to do is, does this have any mapping coordinates on it? So in Max, we can go up here to our utilities, click on more, and go in here to channel info. It'll bring up this button here we can click on. And then it's going to tell you in here whether it's got mapping coordinates on it. So you'll see where this says 0 uh, VC, that's your vertex coordinate, and you'll see it says 0, 0, 0. And then there would be a mapping coordinate I can show you. So if we put a UVW map on this, and then we'll need to update this, then there is mapping coordinate 1. And then if I had another one in here, if I put another UVW uh mapping coordinate in here and we'll say this is on two update this and I guess there's a second one now there's a kind of a strange phenomena in here it's not really strange but people don't ever think about let's say I go this is 12 okay when I do that then it's going to put a coordinate all through all of these now there'll be dead coordinates but it can just get confusing so what I would tell you that you want to get in a habit of you know First one is one, second one's two, third, three, and four, and so forth, so that we don't have all of these dead coordinates in here. Okay. And so, what we've learned is this has no coordinates on it. Now, uh, to put coordinates on something like this is a, is a really kind of pain. Uh, so what I do is this. So we'll go ahead and we'll just make a clone of this. So we'll go ahead and make a clone. Make it a copy, not an instance. I just call this new um, cable. And we'll hide the other one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, what I want is to convert this to a spline. Okay, so instead of it being a piece of geometry, I want to treat it as a spline. Now, I could easily rip an edge off of one of these. So I could come in here and rip that spline, but what I really want is one that's in the center of it. So what you can do is to come in here and put a push modifier on this. So what a push modifier does is push based on surface normals. So as I increase this, it's going to get fatter. But as I decrease it, it's going to get thin, thin, thin. Now you can go to a point, see, you see right there, where then I'm going thinner, thinner. But then what's going to happen is, is then it's going to cross over itself. It's going to invert. So that's about as far as I can get on it. Now, it's very hard when you're in a perspective view to be able to come in here and to, um, oops, to come in here and zoom in on it. But if you switch to the orthographic view, which is you on your keyboard, then you can get in really close on it. So what we want to do is go ahead and collapse that push into it. And now I can grab an edge and then I can convert that shape from selection, which is going to turn this into a spline. I'm going to use linear, which means it's not going to reinterpolate it. It's going to give me what I had. And then once I have that, then I can delete this. And what I have is a spline that pretty much is running right down the center of where the other one was. So... Now what we get, we can do is we can come in here and we can enable uh, this uh, rendering in the viewport. And let's hide all and let's hide unselected. 
Okay, so... So let's go ahead and put these in a layer by themselves, making our lives easier, easier, create a layer. Okay, so now there's the old hose, and here is my new one. So what I can do is I can increase the thickness of this. And what I'll do is grab this one and I'm going to turn it transparent. So Alt X is X ray. And then I've got this one. But I can click. Then what I want to do is adjust it till it's about the size of what the other one was. Okay, so now they're both about the same size. All right, so at this point, I really don't need this old one. I'm just going to leave it for right now. So what I have now is I've got a, uh, a, a little tube, a cable, whatever you want to refer to this, that's identical to the original one except it's explain. Now the reason that's an, important to us is we can come in here and we can generate mapping coordinates from it. Okay. Now I would have a tendency to rebuild this first. And what I mean by that is can you see how some places it's got a lot more geometry and other places it's got less geometry? Well, I can I can fix that. So what I want to do is to come in and put a modifier on this called normalize spline. And then what it will try to do is to put equally spaced geometry in it. Now, there's several ways that you can do this. Um, you can tell it to show the knots. And then what I'm going to do is tell it to not be uh, 3D in my viewport. And then I can, I'm going to do not count. And then I can increase the knots. That's the, our vertices. And then I can go in here and say, well, how much is it changing the shape? And that's holding the shape pretty good. It's got a little bit different of a kink right in there. like that better and so that looks pretty good okay so now the benefit is let's go in here and make this renderable again is I'm going to get And then I can go ahead and convert this to a spline, and it'll embed that in there. So now I'm going to have a, a more flowing uh, piece of geometry without so much of its with a little kinks in there. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to generate mapping coordinates with this, or it automatically generated mapping coordinates. So now if I go in here and put a, an unwrap UVW on this and I open it up, this is already unwrapped. All we need to do is to pick it and then we want to uh, pack it so it's within our one-to-one -one space. And there it is unwrapped. Now, sometimes I may decide I want to change where the seam is. Okay. And I'm getting a, let's turn off our environment map. And I want a solid background. Okay. So I can change this. Now, really, where this one is looks pretty good. I mean, where you normally want it is along the bottom edge of something, okay? And that's pretty much where it's at. And what I'm going to do is put another UV unwrap on top of this one so I can show you how to split it and stitch it back together if it was wrong. 
Okay, so let's say that what we really wanted was we came into here and we decided that that we wanted to actually split it, say, there. So we could double-click on that. We could right-click and go break, okay, which is also this button. Double-click on that again. Is this button right there, and that breaks it. So then I could come in here, and I could double-click on this one, and I could go Stitch Selected. And then it would change it and restitch that back together. So that's how we would move it if we needed to. We didn't really need to do that, so I'm going to dump that one. That's why I put two on there because th this one didn't need that. So this one's already got a nice flow of it. So the benefit of that now is this has got mapping coordinates. Okay. It's still a spline and it's got mapping coordinates. So if I come in here and I put a checker in my base color now and make sure this is applied to it and we're going to turn this on and about 60, 40 to 60 is normal and we need to go to standard here and then we'll be able to see our checkerboard on there and we could go, since this is really skinny, we'll go... We'll double that, 120. And now you'll be able to see those on there better. So now that's unwrapped, okay? So we can still uh, texture it with a procedural texture, but then we could also uh, kick a bitmap out from that. So we could open up the editor. And then we could go in here, Tools, uh, Render UVW Template tell it what size we want it, and we could render the template. And there, unwrapped, and then save this. And then we could take it into Photoshop uh, and put our texture on there, what we wanted to do. Okay, now I'm going to clone this. And turn that one off. And so I, I still have one as a spline, but then I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a poly. And so now we're kind of back to what we had before. I did the wrong one. That's okay. So we're back to what we did before, where this is an edit poly just like we had before, but now it's got mapping coordinates on it. All right, there's other things we can do to this now, though. Let's say, and I'm going to turn off our checkerboard. We don't need to see that anymore. Okay, let's say we wanted this as a, I'm just going to hold this. And let's go ahead and we're going to uh, clone this one. And we're going to call this one a uh, transparent parent tube. Okay, so let's say we wanted this to be like a transparent tube with a liquid in it. All right, so what we were going to do here is uh, I don't need the caps on the end of this, so we're going to come in here and then just delete these caps. Okay, all right, this is a bug. I'm going to save this and reopen it. I'm going to just pause while I do that. Okay, so I just uh, reset Max. It was getting, having, getting buggy on me. And so let's... And now I can come in here and delete these caps. 
Okay, so now what we can do is put a shell modifier on this, which will give it some thickness. So, shell. Now, defaults by giving thickness to the outside of it. We want to zero this out, and then we want to add some thickness on the inside of it, like so. We don't need to put multiple segments on it. Okay. And so there is a tube. Okay. So now another thing we can do is to come in here and let's just go ahead and convert this to a poly. And then I'm going to select polygons, back face, by angle, and then click on the inside. And that's going to select the entire inside. And so then what I can do is go over here and click detach. And we're going to call this tube liquid and then there it is that's the liquid that we made inside of it and then what we can do is in this particular case I do want to cap this so we'll go ahead and cap this as a matter of fact, before we do that, though, what we need to do is flip the normals on it because it's facing the inside and we want this face in the outside. So we want to go to uh, our polygons and then we want to go right here to flip and that'll flip the normal. So it's facing the outside. And then I want to go ahead and cap these. OK, so that's my inner liquid. And then I'm going to go back to my transparent tube. And now my transparent tube doesn't have an inside. So what we want to do is go back to what we had before. I want to delete these little end pieces. And so now we're going to go ahead and put the shell back on it. And it will keep the last setting. And now we've replaced back into our uh, transparent tube. And we can convert that to a poly. And so now we have the inside and we have the outside. So then we could do something like um, we could come in here and get, we'll call this transparent tube. Transparent. And we'll use this as solid glass. And then we'll put that on our transparent tube. Then we're probably, I'm going to turn down some of the blueness that comes with a little bit of a blue. So I'm going to drop that down a little bit. And then we'll do another one doing the same thing. But this is going to be our tube liquid. And then I'm probably going to make this one like a pneumatic, uh, like a transmission kind of fluid. So it'll be kind of a brownish burgundy kind of look. And then we'll put that on our liquid. And then let's go ahead and unhide all. Okay, so uh, here's our two tubes, and we can turn those off. And then let's turn these originals off. And so that's all we have showing right there. And then we can. Bring up our active shade, and of course it's going to look bad because oh, I turned the lighting off. Okay, and so then what we'll have is liquid flowing down a tube. And so that's one solution, okay? One solution is a tube with liquid in it. 
We can also uh, adjust uh, the actual uh, liquid. You can put a push modifier on that. And then I can explore with exactly how thick it needs to be, that liquid in there. If I get it too thick, it'll start where we don't actually see the edges of it. So we might want to shrink it just a little bit. And now you'll be able to see the edges of the tube. And then you'll be able to see the liquid that's in there too. And then, of course, we can adjust, you know, the color and everything about it as we go. Okay, so that's one way. Okay. And, of course, we can do other things with the liquid, with the tube, too. We can apply some texturing and stuff to the tube. But that's one way to approach this is that these are actually translucent tubes. And we have liquid going through those, like a pneumatic uh, liquid. It's kind of like uh, your brake linings in your car. So, uh, you know, brake, uh, your brake liquid is kind of a reddish color. So it's something like that. Of course, you could make it other colors too. But that may be one way that we wanted to deal with this as it being something of that nature. But it could be other things too. So let's look at other options. So we're going to turn those off. And now we'll come back to our other tube that's in here and we'll just go ahead and hide and select this. So we got our other shape that I made a copy of so we could go back to this. Now there's other things that we can do with this and let's go ahead and make a clone of this one. So we can always give ourselves an out and we'll just call this metal cable and so what I'm going to do here is go ahead and convert this to a poly and then we're going to create a shader for this one and we're going to start off with uh, let's uh, to make it easier to see it I want it to be metal so we'll just start with a copper right now because that's kind of easy to see and so we'll have a, a copper, okay? <clears throat> now what we're going to do is kind of make this seem like kind of a braided cable. So there's a couple of ways to go in and do this. So let's pull out procedurals. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a checker. And there's another one here called tiles. And uh, let's start with tiles. We're going to put this in our bump map slot and then we're going to kick up the bump map slot. I don't know, maybe six. So on our tiles, and we're going to have to get kind of close to this where we can see what's going on. And you'll be able to see it right now. And so Let's make it so it's easier for me to show you guys. And so we'll pull this over here. Or maybe this will be easier. Okay, I don't know what this needs to be. Let's go 200. Okay, and then we're going to want uh, our texture to be black. Uh, no, let's do white and our grout to be black. And then we can deal with our gaps. So we're getting something like this. And then we can also rotate it on the W. And that's going to cause it to look like a braided cable without it being any geometry, but it's just a bump on there. So we're rotating it on the W. And what we're really trying to get is kind of like little diamonds.
like that. And of course, then you can, you know, you can change this. It doesn't have to be copper. We just change this color to whatever, you know, we want it to be. We can also use the checker. Let's do that. Gives us a little bit different of a look. What did I use on that other one? 200. So we'll get in that range also. And we'll rotate that. this I think I want it more let's go 300 that's better you get a little bit different look I kind of have a tendency to like the tiles because I can set the gap. So it's like you're setting how big these little squares are in here. You're setting the gap that's between them. So something like that can work too. Of course, you could still do this and then you could float a um, a bitmap on top of it. Some people were wanting to put type on theirs. So you could put um, in your base color, we could put a composite and put text. And then you could put text that floats on top of this. Because the only thing that's happening here is it's just a bump map that we're putting on there to get that kind of a look. And then that's another kind of way to deal with this. So let's go ahead and unhide. And and there's with our metal cable. And then of course you can, uh, right now it's like highly reflective. And you could deal with that where you come in and turn up your roughness. Let's go to advanced and let's start turning up our roughness so that it's not quite as uh, shiny. Okay, but it's still like a metal kind of hose. Maybe around that. Still want a little bit of a sheen to it. So that's an interesting look too. So at any given time, I'm trying to figure out ways to make things look interesting. And uh, that's a way that I can do that. Now, you could take this a little bit further if you wanted to. Let's get a little bit closer into it. And let's go in here and mess with the color because what we're doing right now is really messing with um, a bump in here. But we could go into our color and we'll keep it as one material right now, but we could do it as two materials too. Let's just go ahead and do a mix in here. And a mix allows you to mix between two colors. So I'd want to go ahead and copy the color I had in there. Okay, but then I could come in here and say, okay, I'm going to put like some more coppery color and now drop this same grout that you have in the bump, the tiles, and put it in our mix amount. And then we're, let's go ahead and swap this. And then what it's going to do is it's going to put uh, a kind of a, a copper wire wrapping around this so you can actually play with that. 
Okay, actually. Give me a wider gap so I can see it a little bit better. Something like that. And of course, the other thing we can do is we could do it where it's two different shaders in there too. Right now, we're just doing two different colors. So it's one sheen. But we could also go in and actually make it as another shader. So we could get a blend. And go ahead and we'll put this in material one. So that's and then assign this to it. Then we'll want the same bump in both of them. And then we can go ahead and copy this color. And paste it in here. And then we need to put this in our mass between the two shaders. Now this shader sets the sheen that's down in below that. So I might want that highly reflective or I might want it a little bit more flat. So, but then we can adjust each one of these. So this is the outer hose and this is the inner hose and we could play with those as well and so that can make for an interesting kind of cable so you have options with that and of course you could go ahead and put procedurals and stuff on this too where it seems like you know, that it's it's uh, shifting uh, color as it goes along. And you can do that with this too. Okay, so that gives you some options. This is how to do a pseudo braided cable. I already put up a uh, another video on how to do a real braided cable. And then our how to do a tube with some liquid in it. And then that we can unwrap this and then you can actually paint a, a material on it or you can put uh, letters on it that will flow along it. And that gives you a lot of options of how to uh, mess with these cables. Anytime that you are given a model, and this is very common in industry to be given a model, um, we have to just figure out ways to deal with it. Okay. So I could have gone in and unwrapped one of these. Okay, I could have done that. It's kind of a pain, but I usually have a tendency to do what I did, which is strip a spline from it, and then I can then it gives me a lot more options quickly how to deal with doing uh, cables in there. Okay, so hopefully that helped you guys and give you some options on how to deal with these uh, hoses or cables or whatever you think these are. All right, thank you.